Hi everyone, today we're gonna talk about how the Kytera engine operates and how we can adjust the air volume which is being used by the system. As you may have known, Kytera is a fully mechanical HP engine which means it doesn't operate on electronic solenoid system. Uh, the main operation of the Kytera is based on the sear which is uh, linked with the trigger and when you pull the trigger the sear moves and it releases the internal spool. Let's assume you have cocked the engine, you have fired and what happens? As you can see here this is my IGL so the air flows via the IGL into the engine. When we will unscrew uh, the cover we can see three parts. First is the cover itself, then it's the nozzle, and inside the spool. The air flows via the IGL inside the engine, and here you have two holes. The first hole is the inlet hole from the IGL, and then air can travel via two paths. The first in is to the metering screw and into the engine. And the second way is through this recess towards the front of the engine where the nozzle sits. If you can see, here is a small gap. This gap allows the pressure to push in this direction and retract the nozzle. The nozzle retracts and as it retracts it resets the spool into backwards position. When the spool is in the backwards position the air is allowed to go through the metering screw inside the engine and inside the dump chamber. The dump chamber basically consists from the cylinder, there's a middle part which is made for the ceiling and the air fills all this compartment. If we would have a look on the spool itself, the spool itself consists of the spool, four o-rings and the spool spring. The back side of the spool has these recesses which are used for the sear in order to catch on the spool itself and these two o-rings. These two o-rings is there to seal the damp chamber or the like input of the air to the damp chamber. When the spool is all the way to the back the input hole from the metering screw is in front of these two sealing uh, compartments and the air can freely flow into the damp chamber. When we push the trigger, the spool release uh, the, the sear releases the spool, and due to the tension of the spring, it shoots to the front. When it shoots to the front, these two O-rings will move forward, and the outlet hole of the metering screw is in between them, so the air no longer flows into the dump chamber. We have pushed the trigger and the spool have moved forward and it has been catched by the mechanism. Uh, the air then as can escape a dump chamber via these holes on the spool and then towards the front. If you will notice in the dump chamber itself in the middle there is this smaller circle which sits on these o-rings. When the spool is in the backward position, it sits directly on this middle part, so the holes are not exposed to the internal pressure of the dump chamber. When you shoot it forward, it exposes this front o-ring outside of the middle section, and all the air can escape via these holes to the front where our nozzle sits, and the air shoots out. So now where we went through the details, 
the cycle goes as follows. So we have resetted the engine, the air pushes on the nozzle, nozzle retracts, it resets the engine and uh, resets the spool to the backwards position. Since the spool is in a backwards position, the air can flow into the engine. As the air fills the dam chamber, the pressure from the dam chamber is greater than the force pushing the nozzle back, so the nozzle returns and retracts back forward. And once we push the trigger, the spool shoots to the front. It shoots to the front, it exposes the holes in the spool and the air can escape from the dam chamber via the nozzle out of the engine. And as the pressure drops in the dam chamber, the nozzle is being now pushed back once again, once the pressure pushing the nozzle back is greater than the pressure from the dam chamber pushing it forward. Easy as that. What can we do to control the dwell? First is use the spacers. When we use the spacers, there's less air to work with. So we use less of it. However, since this is a damp chamber based, you would see also with less air in the damp chamber, you would also see less jewel output. Why is that? With the solenoid system, when the solenoid opens, it gets basically a constant pressure from the line. Here we have set pressure of 110 psi, for example, as you have in a tank. And as you as you shoot and it ex escapes the dam chamber, the pressure here drops radically. So it's not a constant 110 psi pushing on the BB. It's 110 at the, at the beginning. And as the air escapes, it gets lower. The second part of controls how much air is going to shoot is the exposure or the time of the exposure of these holes outside of the middle ceiling section. It's controlled by two factors. The first factor is how strong the spool spring is, because the stronger spring, the more force it requires to reset the spool, thus shut the inlet, wall, uh, in the inlet holes. This is the sole reason why if you have higher PSI, for example, 104 to 150, you don't see that much of increase in joule with the stock spool spring. It's because the pressure or the, the speed of the nozzle resetting is so fast that it gets very little time where the holes are exposed from the middle section. Therefore, when you switch to the stronger spring, it requires a stronger force and therefore the time of the exposure increases.